Thanks for checking in at, at Calmo today, and I'm super excited about our new sermon series, Unafraid. It's based on a book by Adam Hamilton, and it talks about how we can deal with the fear and anxiety for all the crazy stuff going on today. Things like health challenges, and, and violence, and wars, and oh my goodness. And all of these things are causing people to get anxious and, 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 and have fears. Well, we do have our Lord and Savior Jesus to be our rock. And we do have the constant presence of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Companion, to help us and guide us. And, you know, looking at the past year and a half, and especially what's going on now, I, I think this, uh, this would be very interesting and helpful. And we're going to focus today on how we can tap into God's saving grace. And again, we're going to continue to, to do this live stream each week. And so just let us know if we can, what we can do better, because uh, we would like this to be as interesting and as helpful as, as possible. And if you'd like more inter- information on this message, you can call or text me at 517-588-8415, or you can always use the Calmo connection card online at calmochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash calamo. Or you can always check out our webpage, which is calmochurch.org, or our Facebook page, which is at calmo1953. Now, Daniel Gardner, in his book, The Science of Fear, noted that that we are the healthiest and longest-lived people in history, and yet we're still increasingly afraid. And this is one of the great paradoxes of of our time, and many of us are are motivated by or living out of fear. And so today we're going to focus on the anxiety side of of that fear. And let's start out with a, a definition of anxiety. Anxiety is a feeling of worry or nervousness or unease, typically about an imminent event or something that we think is coming. It may not even be based in reality. Or it's a nervous disorder characterized by a state of excessive uneasiness and apprehension, typically with compulsive behaviors or, how about this, panic attacks. I mean, I have an occasional panic attack, and it, you know, and it's just, most of the time it's about something that I just can't get my hands around. So some, some common signs of anxiety, uh, feeling nervous, restless, tense, uh, having a sense of impending doom or, or danger, uh, heart rate going up, breathing, sweating, trembling, feeling weak or tired or depressed, um, and then having tired, con- getting constant, concentrating on something. So let's get started with this discussion question. When do you... Or how do you struggle with anxiety or, or panic attacks? And then the, the follow-up to that is, what do you do to work through those, those uh, panic attacks or periods of severe anxiety? Now, there are proven therapeutic techniques uh, to, to combat anxiety. Uh, one of them is exposure th- therapy, and this is facing our fears or anxieties, but having supports to deal with that, uh, to deal with that. One of those support groups would be a loving community, like like church. Um, and what we find is exposure therapy is actually a biblical approach to faith, where trust in God to lead us with the support of our church community to confront and face our fears. And that would be living by faith and not living by fear. Now, our faith in in God and and in Jesus is a huge uh, uh, source of support. And we we hear these words in Isaiah. Now, Isaiah was, I don't know, roughly about 800 years before the birth of Christ. Uh, Isaiah 41.10. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, because I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. Well, that's before the birth of Christ. And here, Jesus says this. Jesus promises the constant presence of an advocate or a companion protector to be with us always. And we hear these words from the Gospel of John 14, uh, starting at verse 15. 
If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, another person who will take care of you, to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and in you. And so we hear that, and you know, that does give me a, personally a sense of peace that I know that, that God is always with me in spite of my my periods of anxiety. Another way that we tap into the power of Jesus is, is when we pray. Now, now here's, here's kind of like a typical prayer. God, help me to not be afraid. Remind me that you are with me. God, I give you my fear. I, I, I give you my discouragement. Strengthen me. Help me. Hold me. And give me victory over this fear. Another source of strength and comfort is to read about other people's experiences with anxiety. And the Bible is full of those, especially in the, in the Psalms. And, and so we hear testimonies on how people have struggled with their anxiety, but yet they reach out to God and they get that reinforcement, that encouragement they need. Now one typical Psalm would be Psalm 56. And Psalm 56 starts out with this little footnote. It says, For the choir director, a Psalm of David regarding the time that the Philistines seized him in Gath. And so what this means is that these words would have been words that King David sang to himself to give him self-encouragement, to lift him up. <clears throat> and, and so this, the first couple of verses are the panic attack, if you will. Oh God, have mercy on me, for people are hounding me. Now, does that sound kind of familiar? My foes attack me all day long. I am constantly hounded by those who slander me, and many are boldly attacking me. Now, King David at this point would have been one of the most powerful people in the world, and yet he's still crying out because he has these anxieties, he has these fears. And now, here's the support side. But when I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I will praise God for what he has promised. I will trust in God. So why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? And that's where we get that strength. And so, you know, we can, I can just kind of picture King David, you know, being off in a room by himself or out in the field someplace and singing that to himself to give himself that encouragement and that reinforcement when he is having those panic attacks. Or maybe it's just a time of severe doubts. And in Psalm 56 is just one of the, the many, many psalms that are written about fear and anxiety. And if you'd like to explore any more, you can reach out to me, or you can just kind of go through the Psalms. There's really a lot of very interesting verses in there. And so now let's consider these reflection questions. What Bible verses or songs have helped you? It's songs in general, not just Bible songs, but songs in general have helped you in times of anxiety. And then, how have you experienced that special moment or that tingle where God is responding to your prayers and fears. And for me, you know, I I do have that, that, that little tingle sensation. It's that little subtle thing that tells me that yeah, God's listening and God's there. It's it's kinda it's kinda spooky, but but I, it's real. It's real for me. And so let us close with these words and I'm gonna sing them a cappello. But they give give us a sense of how a song can give us support and strength. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first So we hear the writer of that song tells us that 
about that grace, God's grace, God's love and care for us that relieves our fears. Because God wants us to have His peace in our hearts. He wants us to feel that everlasting joy that comes when we are in His presence. And I know I feel His peace. I don't understand it. There are times when uh, I just had that feeling and, I, and it just somehow things will be okay. I may not know how or what or when, but they'll be okay. So now, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your love and your care for us and that support that comes to us in means that we don't understand. And so, Lord, we pray that you continue to reveal the Holy Companion in our hearts, especially in those moments of panic attacks or anxiety or fears. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. I hope you found this message about ways to handle our exams, anxieties, and fears and such to be helpful and interesting. And again, if you'd like more information on this, please reach out, or if, or if you just want to talk, you can put a comment in the chat box for this live stream or this post. You can call or text me at 517-588-8415 or the Calmo connection card at calmochurch.org forward slash connect dash with dash Calamo. However that we can uh, however that we can be of service to you, please we 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 want would dearly enjoy sharing God's love with you. I'm your neighbor Jerry, Pastor Calmo Church. Have a great day. Have a great week. And bye for now.